All right, welcome I back. Hello. Folks have made their way uh, back here and hope you were able to um, get everyone's contact information. If you didn't, don't worry. Remember who was in your breakout group and follow them on LinkedIn or make a connection afterwards. And I think it's always great to hear um, about what uh, programs folks are leading. Uh, it is now uh, time to for me to turn this over to um, Heidi Pickman, Vice President of Programs and Policy over at Cameo. Um, since 2011, Cameo, uh, Heidi has worked with Cameo to develop and manage their communication and advocacy activities and has increasingly taken on um, more responsibility. She's done a lot of policy work. She's known in Sacramento and across the state for the ecosystem building work that, that she's leading on behalf of Cameo. And so Heidi, um, I don't think you need much more of an introduction. Uh, but that was so sweet. You know, way more formal than I'm used to. Um, but thank, so thank you. Um, I think I know most of you. There's a couple of new faces on the um, call. But so for those of you who don't know who Cameo is, we're a statewide network of organizations like yourself. So it's the, the statewide version of EA, um, micro lenders, women's business centers, small business development centers, other organizations in the ecosystem, partners like Small Business Majority, um, and we do capacity building, uh, we do advocacy, we work a lot with Small Business Majority on the advocacy side, as well as play a convening role like, like this. So we have a lot going on um that i'm going to tell you about so I, I wanted to take a few minutes because there's a lot of great opportunities Lisa, if you can move it to the next slide please that'd be great um we won um kim you just received a grant hey. for um from the Kauffman foundation to actually fund our policy work on racial equity and inclusion so we're really excited about that um, so if you know anyone um, uh, that might be interested in um, working for us, please let us know and let them know and pass on the job description. Um, and which is on our website on our jobs page. Um, I know it's very exciting. Um, lots, of, lots of exciting things have happened in the last couple of weeks for us. Um, then um, next Wednesday is the Micro Lenders Forum um, at 10 a.m. We have um, just confirmed, I'll let you a little secret, but don't tell anybody. We just confirmed uh, Administrator Isabel Guzman. Everybody probably knows her from her work that she did at the state. Um, she will be joining us um, as well as some other great people and great topics of conversation, all super relevant. Um, so we're really excited. Um, we'll, we um, will be that there's the link. It doesn't have any of the updates because we had to get approved language first. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but you can register there. And then um, at the end of October, the 25th through the 29th is one of our signature programs. It's called Micro Lending Essentials. It's great for staff, uh, lending staff. Um, who may be new to underwriting or TA providers who um, are looking to get their clients funded. Um, and, you know, if they work with their clients on financials and that's something that, that they do, um, then um, it is a great class for you. It's, it's an intensive class. It's hands-on. You underwrite a couple of loans. You really, really work the cases. And as Lisa said, we only have three tickets left. Um, it does, it is, um, it is a really great class and it does, it is not free. I will let you know that it is not free. It does cost money. It's, it's, it's a serious class. Um, uh, there's homework and stuff. So it's really good professional development. Um, the other thing is we have our, we're collecting um, our impact numbers for 2020. Finally, we um, have gotten everybody. We've we, we've made it through all the response of of COVID, and now we're trying to look back at 
what happened. So um, if your organization has not filled out that form, um, you can give that link to whomever is in charge of your data. Um, if you are a Cameo member, but I think if you are an EA member, you are a Cameo member. So um, go ahead and fill that out. And then um, just want to let everybody know um, we also, good news, got a prime grant. Um, and, uh, we do apply for the capacity building track, so we don't compete with our members. Um, it's capacity building for organizations. And unfortunately, we were the only organization in California that received that grant. Um, and, um, but fortunate for us and fortunate for you because the grant includes resources um, for uh, developing language appropriate resources, as well as we'll be doing um, some digital literacy um, uh, curriculum. So um, stay tuned for that. That'll start, we'll, we'll be making those announcements probably near the end of October, early November. Um, and then I did want to let everybody know, Jesse Torres, who's chair of our board, um, will be leading um, uh, his curriculum, Outsmart Disaster Webinar, next week. I think it's the 28th and the 30th. There's two events that are in the daytime. Um, please, uh, these things are really important. If we get, if we, if we're pre prepared, we do less harm. So for you, your clients, you got as you all as small businesses and for your clients so a lot going on and a lot more to come and with that i think i pass it back to zio oh, to me heidi to lisa yeah to lisa. <laughs> it's okay um thanks heidi for all of those great updates i dropped all of the links um in the chat um i have some more updates for you but specific to ea so first off, um, the LA Lenders Matrix is now available on our website. So make sure to check that out. I'm going to drop the link in the chat so that you can download it and share it with all who could benefit from it. It is a living document. So if you would like to add your information to the document, just go ahead and email me and I can send you the spreadsheet to add your information. Um, also, the EA flyer is now also available on our website. Some of you might already have that already, but in case you need to download it and you want to tell people about this great meeting, invite your friends um, or post on your LinkedIn, you can use that flyer as well. It has a quick blurb about what um, EA is about and our LinkedIn information. Um, also, as for those of you who attended our meeting last month, we did crash EA with the LA and San Diego group for our regional meeting, and I collected information for uh, the TA programs that are out there, and so I'm going to create a one-pager convenient flyer. Hopefully, it'll be a one-pager, right? The more information I get, it might end up being a little bit longer, but the point is that uh, it's coming soon. I will be working on that. So if you also want to add information to that, please email it to me and I will have that for you, hopefully by next month, at least the first version of it. Additionally, um, you know, with the holidays coming up, we do want to promote all of the great small businesses that you all are supporting. So if you are working on any shopping guides, please also, um, send that information to me. We can connect via a quick uh, Calendly chat and talk about it, or you could just send me the information to my email. And I'm just gonna start gathering that information so that we could promote, promote it um, on our website as well as Cameo's email list. Um, for January, we thought it would be great to start off the year with a small business panel. Um, we thought it would be amazing to start the year with highlighting the different um, great work that small businesses are doing. So if you have somebody in mind who would be great to talk to, um, let's connect on that as well. And we can start brainstorming some ideas for our January meeting. So I've, like I said, I've dropped the email in the chat so you could connect with me. And last, um, I just want to invite you to our next meeting. There's not, there isn't a description yet on there. All it is is a save the date. 
Um, I will tell you in advance that the date may change to Friday. As of now, it's still on the fourth Thursday, which is October 28th at 11, but we're possibly thinking of changing it to Friday. But if we do, I will make sure to get you that information in advance so that you could join us. Um, does anybody have any questions on any of the updates that myself or Heidi went over so far? Yeah, I have a question for Heidi uh, regarding the survey. So even if we fill it out, do we, I mean, I, we still keep getting the email. It, should we just ignore it or? Yeah, it, just ignore okay. it. Well, I'll, we have a new communications person. So um, uh, if you'll be patient with us we, during the transition, we usually let, we usually try and um, mute those people who have done filled things out. But um, she's got a, she's got a little she's got enough on her plate. So if if you guys will just be patient. So just ignore it. Thank you. Yeah, just ignore it. Perfect. Thanks. I'll I'll try and I'll I'll put that I'll put that message in the in the email next time we send it out. Thanks, Jay. Anybody else? Any questions? All right. Well, with that, I will toss it back over to Xiomara to introduce our topic and speakers. Yeah, so we have two great speakers with us today. Um, we're going to be learning about two new online platforms and tools. And so the first guest that we have with us will be Joshua Shane. He is co-founder of um, community ecosystem uh, Canopy, where um, they seek to transform small business and community data into actionable intelligence for growth, resiliency, and community impact. Um, they're working shoulder to shoulder with small businesses, uh, support organizations, and CDFIs to develop solutions and help all business owners achieve their full potential. And after Joshua uh, wraps up his presentation about the um, Canopy uh, product, uh, we will hear from David. And I think I'll just wait to introduce uh, David Schillinger, our, the founder and creative director of Lowercase Productions, um, celebrate once we uh, wrap up with Joshua's presentation. Joshua, welcome. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate the opportunity and uh, what a great group of people. I enjoyed the breakout room and uh, really looking forward to continuing conversations after, after today. So as, as uh, Zia mentioned, we are a, uh, a data-driven community impact platform. And what does that mean? That's sort of you know, abstract, but you know, I think it's really appropriate with uh, the subject today being big data because big data um, has, really been, um, has really not been used for the benefit of communities and small business owners over the last decade plus where online life has really kicked in. Um, you know, the fo folks like Google and Facebook have been really extracting the value of community data and individual data, and then taking that and selling it back to community members and small businesses as a way to provide advertising. And so we want to really flip that and reverse it and actually keep the value of data with small businesses and within the communities so they can benefit from the information that they are generating on a daily basis, whether it be through their you know, small business transactional data, whether it be what's going on with um, community foot traffic, et cetera. So our goal is really to transform this, the small business and community data, as, as you mentioned, and create growth and resilience and be able to more importantly measure impact to ensure that we can provide information to small businesses, but also to their, um, to their support organizations, whether CDFI, or business advisors to help them have, uh, have more impact and be more efficient. So um, we obviously, you know, as well as everyone else here, believe that investing capital in coaching in historically underserved uh, communities is an effective way to create wealth and resilience. Um, and that is ultim ultimately our goal. But of course, there are a bunch of challenges with that. Um, it, it doesn't scale very well. There's a lack of information, a lack of data. And it's unclear uh, often what the direct causal impact is with things. We can sort of correlate and have a good idea about, you know, if this sort of investment is made here, we sort of see this out output. But we want to be able to quantify that in such a way that we can allow for more 
uh, grant money, more investment money to come into these communities because we can have a direct causal relationship between the investment and or the coaching on the impact of the small in the small business ecosystem in the community. So we are currently working um, on, in Chicago with a few partners to implement this um, on the west and south sides of Chicago, focusing on delivering capital, coaching, and measuring impact. Um, and so we're working very closely with Allies for Community Business, which is 90% um, of the microloans in the Chicago area. And we have a strategic relationship with uh, uh, CRF, Community uh, Reinvestment Fund. Um, we are all, we're working with their platform and they're also partnering with us on these kinds of projects. We also have participants from the city of Chicago uh, economic, uh, economic Deputies Department, we're working with JP Morgan Chase and, and other uh, grassroots organizations there. So on the capital side, what we're looking to do is be really proactive on all of these things, right? We wanna be able to provide the amount of capital that a community business owner needs at the moment they need it. That's a fair price for them, but also is economic for the lend lender and the borrower. We wanna make sure that that system works as efficiently as possible. And on the coaching side, we wanna offer suggestions that the community business owner needs you know, when they would value it most and in a way that they, it's immediately actionable. So we wanna make sure that whatever suggestions or interventions are being made can be, can be implemented right now and can have a direct impact on, on the business. And, and lastly, we wanna measure impact. Which investment, which investment, what advice, what policy recommendations, um, what create outcomes that we seek and which, you know, more equally as important, which don't, right? So we can focus on what scales well and what's economic for the coaching provider. And, and ultimately all of this information is gonna roll up to, um, to a point where we can help, it, help decision makers um, at the policy level, impact investors and other support organizations to make better decisions about how to support small businesses in their communities. So what do small businesses get out of this? And I'll talk in a little bit about how this works and how we are able to provide these services. We wanna provide attractive capital um, which means you know, that capital is available when they need it in a proactive way um, at, at, a, at, a, at a rate that they can afford. Increased sales, well, we can help demand forecasting. If there's an event coming up, we can provide some information that says, hey, here's a way that you can uh, provide enough inventory to cover, the, cover the, uh, the upcoming events that are happening in your neighborhood if, if you're a bricks and mortar. Better suppliers, we can look across uh, an industry like restaurants and say, hey, some of these, are, uh, some of these um, suppliers are better than others. You can pool your resources perhaps and create a supplier access cooperative. And then we can also provide peer connections, industry trends, you can compare against other uh, businesses in your industry and in your environment, and then performance benchmarks as well. And then, um, and then for, um, for support organizations, you know, provide uh, entrepreneurs, more entrepreneurs with services more efficiently we can provide early warning systems for vulnerable businesses. So we can look at cash flows and those kinds of things, which I'll show you in a moment, and, and you know, make sure that we intervene or provide suggestions in a way that uh, will prevent them from having trouble um, in the future. And then we wanna be able to measure true impact of the investment and in interventions, as I mentioned. We wanna make sure that there is resources and capital flowing into these small businesses and that we can actually measure the actual impact in a quantified way about how that's having a, a positive change on the environment. So how does this work? Well, this is, this is a big data topic. And so this is focused on data. Um, and so what we do is we bring in multiple streams of, of data, and then we combine it into a dynamic profile for each small business. And then we use tra uh, transparent analytics. I'm gonna talk a moment about that. And then we, on the right, you can see all the services that we provide. So for pre-existing data, you know, we, there's census information, there is you know, foot traffic information about neighborhoods, there's merchant activity, you know, what, how much money consumers are spending in a location in an industry. And uh, we have access through all of that with a partnership through, through with MasterCard, so we can get you know, local data. Operations data, we can connect directly to um, banking data through uh, Finicity integration, um, which allows small businesses to provide their information in a way that gives them value back. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. And then we have, you know, you know qual we have uh, qualitative data where we talk to all the individual um, small businesses, we send out surveys, et cetera. So all this data comes in and we use 
what, what we call transparent analytics. This is not the traditional black box artificial intelligence, which is fraught with all sorts of problems in terms of bias and those kinds of things. We're using a new technique that allows us to have a completely auditable trail so we can be sure that bias is not being introduced because we'll have multiple people auditing the process. Out of this comes small business services, living capital application. Basically, because we have this information, we will be able to proactively say, hey, we see that you know, your organization has gotten to the point where you could really use a loan to help your goals. Would you like a loan? You click yes, and then you can actually automatically go through that process rather than having to figure it out all yourself and reproduce paperwork every time. Matching you to uh, capital that's available, other things like expense management and demand forecasting. So, and for support organizations, dynamic impact reporting, um, again, the early, an early warning system for small businesses, community intelligence, and other things. So what does that look like? Um, in, a, in practical terms, we wanna be able to transform the experience of business, business advisors. So instead of spending uh, so much of their time, and this is what we've heard from a number of, of uh, the business support orgs that we've talked to, instead of spending their time reaching out to try to understand small business needs, can actually be able to spend most of their time proactively working with customers um, with actionable data-driven intelligence. So we will put, we're providing dashboards that surface key data points and metrics. And you know, the, a business advisor can set whatever their priorities are, what their goals and parameters are, and have a dashboard every day that says, here are your priorities based on the data that we have and the, uh, and the focus that you have and your, and your uh, help for your community. So um, we don't have a lot of time here, but um, this is one of the dashboards for the small businesses. And this is sort of our V1. We're gonna be expanding this a lot, but what you can see here is that this is a cash flow dashboard and it, ha and it shows um, a number of different attributes, what your balance is, baseline, buffer, and then we have these tabs that show net cash flow, average transactions, negative balance days. So this is sort of a, a, a quick look at what the financial health is of a small business. And we're gonna be adding more and more. And we also have another tab where you can click on the future that says, you know, here's what your, here's what your goals are, here's how long it's gonna take based on trend for you to achieve those things. And here's how, where we might be able to help you with some capital or some coaching along the way in a very proactive way. And we're gonna end up where, this will have um, a separate box in here that says, oh, here's what you can do for next step um, to help you reach your goals. And then from the business advisory side, there will be a screen that has all of your, all the clients in your portfolio. And you can click on one um, to see what the status is of that business and see what needs to be done. So um, for in this case, we can click on Maria's Mexican restaurant and up it comes and you as a business support uh, or advisor can look at the state of their business, their cash flow, et cetera, and be able to have some, some information to uh, intervene. So that is the, the, the quick 10 minute overview. And I know that there was a lot there. We're gonna drop in um, a link here in a moment. Um, but as part, I just wanted to close with um, the partners that we're working with on the Chicago pilot. So the idea here is that, you know, we can, we're gonna be helping allies for community business um, be way more efficient in their ability to serve their client base. Um, and also more importantly for them, measure the impact that they're having within the community using this data. Um, and then from uh, CRF, we were already working with them on their historical data. And so we're allowing them to, instead of looking backwards with incomplete impact data, they can look forward and make decisions based on the evidence that we have from their historical data about how best to serve um, their direct customers and, uh, the, and the CDFIs that they work with. Um, and then um, lastly, um, here is a quick uh, URL. Uh, my colleague, uh, Corey Slater is on as well. He's head of product and he just dropped in a link to, the, uh, to uh, signing up where we, you can get a newsletter and, um, and we will reach out to you as, as well. Happy, I, and so Frank, there, there is the link that, uh, that Corey provided. Um, obviously this is just a taste, a teaser um, in 10 minutes, but we are more than happy to talk to anyone um, who would like to follow up and see our demo and get more information. Thank you so much. Thanks, Joshua. And as folks have questions, um, you know, please feel free to drop those in the chat box, in the, 
Um, and we will have time to go through some questions at the end um, after Shane, after David's presentation. And so, you know, if you have questions about how this could actually operate in your uh, with the clients that you serve, um, some challenges or opportunities that you could forecast that this um, program could really help uh, spur up the way that you're providing technical assistance or deploying capital to business owners. Again, you know, feel free to put those into the chat box and we'll have a chance to um, go through some of those questions. Or you can also, you know, we'll have a Q&A period so you can also hold your question. Maybe Heidi will um, invite you to the stage to, to ask that question. So our next speaker, um, David Schellinger, is the founder and creative director of Lowercase Productions, uh, Celebrate. Uh, which is an online, Celebrate is an online marketplace that allows chambers of commerces, local business associations, or other organizations to sell samplings of goods, wares, services, and food from local small businesses in their communities. Uh, Celebrate is not intended to function as an evergreen marketplace, which would require vendors to manage a new online e-commerce platform in addition to one that they may already have, but rather it's set up to host event-based uh, themed marketplaces that run from four to eight weeks around major holidays and neighborhood events. So um, as we've all understood, as in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, so many businesses have had to drastically shift the way that they've operated, many of them talking about their pivots into the online marketplaces. Um, and we recognize that it's so challenging sometimes uh, to carve out space to be able to compete effectively or to uh, leverage um, space for yourself and your business and your community. And so really excited to learn about this tool, David. Uh, welcome to the stage and looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> Can everyone see a little website that says celebrate at the top? Yes. Okay. Um, as Asia kind of mentioned, you know, we we always like to be upfront. We are not trying to compete with the Googles and these huge, you know, international marketplaces here. You know, while we recognize or say Amazon and Googles, um, while we recognize, as C also kind of mentioned. Even prior to COVID-19, you know, the inverse of the increase of online sales and the decrease of brick and mortar was being really pronounced and that just got blown out of the water because of COVID-19. <clears throat> um, ironically, we're also based in Chicago. I know, Joshua, you're based in Seattle, but you're working in Chicago with some of the same communities that we're working with as well. So it's a Chicago weekend for you guys in Southern California. Um, what we started working with last year was a lot of our neighborhood organizations, associate, business associations, chambers of commerce that used to put together uh, events in summer or fall that you know would bring all the neighborhood together and all the business could sell their food and their samplings or their goods out on the street. You know, 2020, those just went away. Even in 2021 with Delta, more than 50% of our neighborhoods weren't able to actually have their festivals. And if they had them, they were pushed back so late that we're getting them now in October and November, which if anything knows, you know, with you folks not on the West Coast, but in the Midwest, it gets a little chillier at this time of year, so not everyone wants to go out and shop. <laughs> so what we started to do were build very simple uh, event-based um, timed marketplaces. As uh, Sia kind of mentioned, this is not an evergreen tool that is going to be up 365 a year. But the idea is that whether you're shopping around back to school, whether you're shopping around the Mother's Day, Father's Day, graduation day, holidays, whether you're shopping for uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know, can communities, uh, you know, kind of uh, punch above their weight a little bit by each individual business trying to focus on their own um, uh, e-commerce platform, which they should do, are there abilities to introduce the neighborhood as a community? And instead of which we see a lot um, happen in Chicago, and I also do a lot of work in San Francisco because I used to be in San Francisco for 22 years, you know, a lot of the um, <clears throat> communities uh, during COVID put together websites that said, you know, check out and support all our small businesses. And I am I know we are all here promoting small businesses. One of the hardest things we learned along the way is that the research we found 
And it's been reinforced uh, through our work with American Express um, uh, with their Shop Small campaign is that most people, they care about if a business is owned by a, by a local independent small family or whatever, but that's not their driving factor. Their driving factor is, is it convenient for me? Can I get to something in my neighborhood? Can I walk to a bunch of places in a short trip and get everything I need? And then secondly, what is the experience of shopping and experiencing all the different things that the businesses have to offer? You know, in terms of ranking, the fact that it was a business that is owned independently and by a local person was well below the uh, halfway mark of the data points. And it's something that we had to come to terms with. So what we are trying to do here, again, is, is a very simple tool that uh, a chamber of commerce, a business association, nonprofit organizations, we do this with church and other charities, um, organize a group of businesses, 10 to 20 businesses. Um, we actually put the marketplace together. We do not take any commission on this. We do take a fee to set it up for you and manage it for you. We actually, just like the Googles and the Amazons, we will actually take care of the transaction. We'll take care of all the taxes. But what it does is it introduces the public at large to a collection of what that community, that small business community can offer. So I'm just gonna show you a really quick beta. I guess today was the beta sites, Joshua, you shared a, a beta of one of your dashboards. You're gonna see the beta of our site here. Um, there's just a top portion that's branded to whatever community uh, is hosting this. And then we basically explain how long the marketplace is run through. We found that the time-based ones, there's more of a sense of urgency that you wanna check out what's available during this period of time versus I know this is another a website like Amazon where everything's gonna be available the entire year. Um, we also currently do not want people to ship stuff because we want people to actually pick the stuff up in the neighborhood, whether they go to the actual vendors they bought from or whether they go to the Chamber of Commerce as kind of a distribution center. We really wanna encourage people to learn what the neighborhood has to offer and then get an incentive to come into the neighborhood. And then we really quickly jump right into products available. You know, we try to limit this to no more than 10 products for each vendor. If you really think of your street fairs and festivals, no store is gonna bring their entire store out onto the street. They, they kind of curate what they want to sell to the public to give them an introduction to who they are. Um, I won't go into all the, the functionality of selling. I mean, anyone who's been on Amazon knows how, to, how these e-commerce sites work. It's a very simple one based on WordPress. Um, you can put your own cart together. You can click on something and add it to a cart. It's pretty basic. Um, no, I won't need to go to those. But one of the other things that we are adding um, is the ability to search and buy directly from these businesses. Everyone is all mixed together. You can also, if you want to, if you're really interested in one particular business you found, you can shop just by that business. Again, you only see their sampling, but you can also go into their website if you just choose to not buy through the marketplace and just go directly to them. And we've also added the section for donation. Um, whether we, as in the organization who sponsors or hosts the marketplace, when you actually are in your shopping cart, you can choose to either add a donation to the organization that's putting it together, or we allow the organization the ability to add a $1 or $2 surcharge per uh, transaction that goes tax-free to the organization. Uh, and then we just kind of identify, uh, this is a sample we did for Amoeba, if you guys are familiar with them as well, um, who's actually sponsoring and post, uh, hosting this event for or the event-based marketplace for you. So again, it's a very simple um, one-page site that um, we have run about uh, 15 of these over the last uh, year and a half. Um, I will be upfront with some wide range of uh, success and not so much success. Um, our experience is the more involved the host is, if it's a chamber of commerce or a business association that has their own social media network and can promote it, they work really well. We've actually, in some of the neighborhoods on, uh, in Chicago, we've had a, a 30 to one in, uh, ROI for every dollar spent putting the marketplace together. We got $30 back into the community. You know, that was the high end. On the lower ends, it was a one to three or one to four because communities put it up and basically expected people to just find it. So it's just like the street fairs and the street festivals, but it's bringing it um, online. So you need to promote it. You need to market it. Um, but it, so far, we've actually had some pretty good success. So we're at the point where we're introducing it to some other people. And you guys are one of the first people we're introducing it to.
And that's uh, my presentation. So thank you very much for your time. Very cool. That's um, so exciting, yeah. Um, David, Rocio was asking if you could drop your um, in email yes. information in the chat because she knows of a chamber who may be interested. <laughs> Does anybody uh, else have any other questions for David or uh, Josh with Canopy? Rocio, I know you had another question for um, in terms of languages, but I saw that Corey answered it in the chat. Who's excited to use this? I, <laughs> I, I just want to say I am very excited about both of these. They serve two very different functions. Um, I think the celebrate, it's some, it sounds like it's something you can implement right now. And yeah. um, uh, why don't we stop sharing screens and just all sort of talk. And, um, and I also think that, um, the Canopy is super powerful. The Canopy platform is super powerful and is really gonna take, it, it's a little bit, it's, it's one of those things that we've been talking about for a long time. It goes, is connecting resources, the, the business owner to resources through and through and through, um, you know, from the, uh, you know, like when they walk in the door of a TA provider or before they even get to a TA provider, they're going to find you through this. Um, and then, but I'm guessing a lot of people will join because they're connected to one of the community partners that you work with. And as well as, um, you know, be able to like get funding and things like that. So I think, you know, um, Canopy is kind of a, a longer, it's a definitely a longer term project and we're really excited about it. Lisa and I have had several really in-depth conversations with Josh and Corey about the project and we're really excited about it. Um, and um, uh, we are looking um, in ways to see if there's a possibility of a partnership. So that'll be coming down the pipeline. And I think uh, the celebration tool is something you guys can implement with your clients right now. If you have enough clients to get on the door and you can be the space where if you're located in your community, maybe down the street, I know like downtown Oakland, we have lots of our members are in downtown Oakland. So it'd be really kind of cool to do it here. Um, and so, uh, you know, David, maybe we could, we'll, we'll probably uh, take this and pass it along to lots of our other members. We're, we're um, actually doing it across the pond from you. Um, we're actually in the Bayview neighborhood in San Francisco. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Working with the groups there, I'd love to hear who you're working with. And, you know, we can definitely help you promote that um, around the holiday times because we do have members that serve the Bayview. Um, so, um, you know, there's all sorts of opportunities. Um, and, you know, I, I, I spoke to someone the other day and, you know, we, we were talking about, you know, the, the big companies are using tech to get to our clients for good or for bad. Some of it's for good, right? But, um, you know, some of it in, on the lending space, I, I always um, am skeptical. So, the more we can embrace and help our small businesses harness and help them compete within Amazon and do the messaging and things like that. And, and, and the more we can help them do those kind of things, the better off that they'll be in our communities will be. So I think these are both super powerful tools. So I just wanna emphasize that. And um, I mean, what did you guys think? I'm like, I'm blown away by both of these tools. So. Both great presentations, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Great opportunity. And I, and I think David, you, we should talk as well because there's a lot of collaboration <laughs> that we can do. I yeah, think it's actually, a, you've talked with one of my partners, Dean, I think, uh, before. Okay, yeah, yes. that's right. So. Yeah. I think I connected you guys. Right? Oh, right. Oh, I didn't realize that that backlash has become celebrated. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I should have okay, yeah. mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was, I was, uh, I was a little confused there. Yeah. So no, I, I can tell you. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, if anybody's thinking about putting together a holiday thing, this sounds awesome. How, David, how long does it take from start to finish to put, pull it together? It usually takes us about three weeks to put one together. Um, so yeah. it's actually a really quick lift. Um, and then, like I said, you know, we're actually doing two of them in Chicago over the holidays that are going to be eight, uh, seven week. So they run from the middle of uh, November to the first week in January. Um, so we're basically building them starting in the middle of October. So yeah, the, hard, I mean, the hardest part, to be fair, is you know, we have kind of like a checklist for if a vendor wants to participate, you know, you give it, they just have to provide the image of what they want to sell, their price point, a description of it. But like I said, we take care of putting everything into the tool for them. So they just have to provide the data and the content for us. Yep. Getting data from our clients is always the hardest stuff, right? That's a little challenging. <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're here to solve, we're here to solve that problem. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I think, you know, if anybody's thinking about now's the time to put something like this together, um, you know, I think Rocio, you got, you have a, you have a possible project going on and so, yeah, and if anybody else is interested, contact David. David, you'll just make sure you let us know if anybody lets <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. If anybody, so. So it looks like we don't have any more questions. Um, so we're at 11.58. <laughs> uh, well, we can wrap up our meeting now if nobody has any questions. As always, I am going to send you the recording, the presentation decks, any additional res uh, resources that I captured in the chat, I will make sure to include in the email. I will send you all this information most likely next week. Um, because I do not have time this week to do it. Um, but I do wanna encourage you to post your community, community events on our EA website. I dropped the link there. You can post them directly and um, they become live on our website. So that's a helpful tool for you all to promote your events. And um, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you coming and we will see you next month. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, David, Corey. Thank you.